be severe. So I'm the one who believes in making America first. You make America first by embracing as much capitalism as this is this, this possible, and by growing through wealth creation. That's how you create. Not by protectionism, not by taxing, not by subsidies, not by tariffs. Again, I have a national security exception when it comes to China. China is our enemy. China is our enemy. China seeks to replace us as... What, what is it with this Dershowitz all the time? When he's, uh, he's at Martha's Vineyard, he's got the Skype camera up his left nostril. I, I don't understand what's going on here. Okay, okay, they don't like you at Martha's Vineyard. Then get the hell out of there. Who wants to go to Martha's Vineyard anyway? I don't like Dershowitz. I, I'm not putting him down. Go to New Tucker for crying out loud. What do you want? I don't know. I walk out there. People love me. People hate me. People don't know me. It's the way it is. All right, let's continue. Frank Livingston, New Jersey, the great WABC. Go. Yeah, I'm calling in reference to uh, the unfairness of the tariffs. Uh, uh, not only do I disagree with tariffs, period, just like you, but the way that they're being administered. I'll give you an example. Your favorite enemy is China. I buy some items from them that I cannot purchase here in the States. Or customers in the steel industry. So what happens is, is I have these rules ordered. It's been since January. So now they come over here and we get that 25% increase. Well, why? That's totally unfair. These things have been, you know, I'm not the go since last January, and it takes six months. There was no thought process to what will happen. What's going to happen to some of these ports when little guys like myself cannot uh, uh, afford it and say, the heck with it, I'll just leave it there? Well, it's, an, it's an interesting point you raise because it does affect the ports, doesn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. And you got all those union guys at the ports, too, the longshoremen. Yes, exactly, exactly. But the, this whole thing was not thought out very well. And we know Mr. Wilbur Ross also in the steel industry, and uh, let's just say he's not a very, very nice person. I'm not big on him at all. He's made $2.3 billion dollars going all the way to Congress for protectionism, for tariffs, for subsidies. He buys these companies cheap, and then he, uh, then he gets, uh, he, he, uh, it's called crony capitalism. Uh, with you, Mark. Keep up with the good show on Sunday. I love it. I join every weekend. Thank you. I know, I know you're going to love this Sunday. Don't forget. I appreciate it, Frank. Thank you. Jeffrey, Denver, Colorado, on the Mark Levin app. How are you? Thank you, Mark. Thank you, my call. Yes, sir. Well, I spent some time today reading through the Mueller uh, indictment of the Russians. And
I, I agree. And what I'm saying is, uh, fine, they don't have to change, at least put the right label on what they're doing. Exactly. And that, that stop telling us that you are defending press freedom when you're criticized. You're not defending press freedom when you're criticized. You're trying to conceal who you are. And uh, nobody here that I'm aware of is trying to curtail freedom of the press. I mean, we concern you, but I want to should self-identify as a radical left news organization, or better yet, media operations, what they actually are. Just be honest about what you're doing. Stop playing games. We all know what you're doing. That's what you get. Uh, you're defending a freedom of the press because you're being called out as to actually who you are. No, you're not defending freedom of the press. Thank you for your call, man. I appreciate it. We'll be right back. closing costs. Call. 